Have you ever been to a children's home and found how pathetic it was? While well, donors send a lot of resources and donations, but the money is not put for the purpose it's meant for. Today we are in Oyugi's Homa Bay County. We bring you a different story from God will provide the children's orphanage. My name is Newton Onyango Ogada. Um, I was born here. I'm a married person. I have my wife and my five kids. Uh, my history starts from this region. Uh, I went to school in this region uh, from class one to form four. Then after that, I did not go to uh, further studies because of the, the nature of the life we were living in this community. Uh, this led me to be a carpenter. I trained myself as a carpenter. After uh, the training, the carpentry work was not giving me what I was expecting to have. Then I went back to Nairobi to see if I can get something better to uh, maintain my family. When I went there, it was not easy as I was thinking. I joined the Matatu. I worked as a conductor for some time. Then I became uh, from uh, 2001, 2002, 2003. Then uh, I was driving in uh, number 25 Babadogo. I, I think once I drove uh, Kariubangi, Dawanol uh, for some time. Then later I became a driver. I, I went and do my uh, license, my driving school. I got my license and then I started driving. Then I became the Matatu driver for quite a number of time. Then I left that industry and I went to start now driving taxi, uh, which led me to get employed at Kenyatta Hospital. I worked there for two years, then as after a as a driver. And I was driving one of the, the bosses, the administrator for, of the hospital. So I was working there as a driver for quite a number of, maybe two, three years. Then later on, I resigned after having a dream of doing something better for the life of the children. This was not just something I was thinking about because it was not on uh, line of my duty. I just dream about it. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I was like, what kind of a dream is this? How comes I'm dreaming of quitting my job and going start uh, taking care of the children, you know? Then uh, I, I, it forced me to quit. I quit my job because of the dream. Then after quitting my job, I came down here. It was not just easy like how I was thinking. I came and I found it was very difficult, which I could not manage now to take care of my own children. Or just before quitting, how was the how was the tout business and the matatu driver business doing? Just take, share with me about how you felt while you were doing this. Was it something you really wanted to do? Was it something you just wanted to pass time with that you still want to do whatever you want to do? No, I did not even dream about having doing such kind of job like uh, working in the matatu industry as a driver and uh, a conductor. But it forced me because of life. So I was just there, not to stay, but I was aiming to do something better or to be somebody in this country. So I was just there to hold time when I'm still looking on what I can do. That's why I left, I quitted, and I joined Kenyatta Hospital as a driver. And then after that, I, 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 I came now to my dream. So when I had a dream of uh, taking care of the kids, I was wondering uh, what kind of kids that am I going to take care of? What challenges that do, do, do they have? But being I went through a lot, you know, and I'm, I'm having my parents even now. So I went through a lot. Then something came to my mind that when God sent you to go take care of the kids, which means there's need. And we have many kids who has no parents, who has parents and they are poor, really poor, and who has single parents. They are suffering than me. So when I came back to the village, I, st I tried to uh, uh, do some little business which was not going through. Then uh, I started doing tree nursery. I started planting trees. And I remember very well, I sold my trees around 76,000. And I used part of the money to register the organization, which now I'm working on. I, I registered it as Uzima Christian Integrated Project. Then. Uh, 
being the business was not really doing good uh, on my on my site. What, where, what business? Uh, tree plantation and selling trees. So all the tree plantation and the selling of tree, trees were under that Uzima? Yes, I registered it under Uzima now. You know, I start, I, the first thing I did is to start it and then I registered it. So it, is, it was under Uzima. <laughs> then I started a small, a small nursery school to start feeding. I remember me and my wife, my wife was making porridge and bring for the kids and we play with the kids. You know, I rented a small house and then uh, a friend of mine told me there were some guests who were supposed to come in this country for a different organization. And being I was a taxi driver, I was sent to go and bring them. And that's when... You are now in, in, you are in Oyugis. I'm in Oyugis. But somebody shares with you that there are visitors from abroad. Yes. So you, 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 you go get some work and bring Yes, exactly. Them. So when you know when you go to do your taxi driving, you will get some payment. And then I was uh, trying to make my project grow. So any, any job I could do to get something to make sure that I'm boosting what I, I started to do. Yeah. Because you know, when you have the kids, you have to feed them, they have to dress, you have to give them books, and you have to pay the teacher, because yeah. I'm not a teacher by profession. So when I went, I met with this guy called Johnny. Johnny is now the person, my partner, my brother, the guy whom we work with hand in hand. I met him, I met him and when you we were coming, yeah, I, at the airport. It's one of those that it was, it was one of the missionaries that I carried. Then he told me that God spoke to me to work with you. And I am just from the rehab center. I was addicted and I went through the program. And God is telling me to work with you. I was surprised because I, I, I could not connect my dream and what God sent him to do. You know. Then I, I said, yes, we can work together. I don't see any problem with that. So long as what we are going to do is going to benefit the children of my dream, you know. Then we started with them. It has been a long journey since we met. It, we have tried. We, we, we married like that. Until today, we have children. We have school. We have hospital. We have supported uh, 1,500 widows. We build them houses. We feed. We do a lot of medical uh, 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 outreaches. So it has been the hands of God, and it is not just me. It is not Newton. It is the dream which God sent to me to do, and I'm doing it. Now, most, most importantly, how did the children home start? What structures did you have? Did you have enough money to just put up the structures as we see them today? How did it start? And the challenges you went through while setting up the <laughs> That was the, it is the most, um, expensive project I've ever seen because it is non-profit and you have to feed the kids. Yes. It is, the, it, it has no return um, uh, in uh, in material way, but it has return from God. Yes. Uh, when we start building there, it was not easy. I remember the first house we built was a mud house, which we stayed there for some quite number of years, around two years. That is when we start raising money in America and through Elwishas, churches, and we got enough money to build that orphanage. And even the water which you were using there, me personally and Johnny, the, my brother from America, we start digging that, that well ourselves because we could not manage to pay somebody to dig it until we get 20 feet where we could not breathe in. That is when God sent somebody with some money we, that we used to finish that well the first well that we, we, we dug in that compound. So it has, it, it has been a difficult thing. It is not just a walkover thing. It's a lot of stress, a lot of headache. You know, these kids, they, are, they become sick. These kids, they need clothes. These kids, they need shoes. These kids, they need blankets. These kids, they need, a, they need all kind of assist, uh, I mean, uh, uh, assistance that we need to offer. Yeah, so it has not been that easy. It took us a number of years. Now we have 10, 11 years down the line. Uh, but it is not just something that you walk and you, you do it. Yeah. Now, why does your orphanage look like a place that is not an orphanage? That's very important. Is it deliberate? Did you want to have it the way it is? Or is it just a coincidence? Even the way it is, it's not 
worth my expectation. The, the orphanage is a place for the children who lost their parents. Remember, I'm over 40 years and I still have my parents. And there's a child who lost a parent when he or she is around three to one year, five years. Uh, to me, I need to do much better than what I have today. I want them to have a, a place they call home, a place where my kids can go and sleep and stay, a place where me personally, I, I can go and stay. You know, I don't just put a, a place of collecting money. If I want money, I go work and get the money. I'm, I'm a hardworking person. If I need to live a very wealthy life, I join business, then I do business, then I get what it takes for me to live like a king. But when I get money to support the kids, I want that place to be a, a place we call a home. You know, we need a clean place. That's what God wants from us. You know, so that's why it, to me it is not even what I want. It's maybe 60% of what I think it should be. You know, but I'm very sure that it will get there one time. The government was just right, 100%. Because some people are doing this as business. If you do this as business, even if the government could not manage to close your home, my friend, God will punish your family. Let me tell you, you don't need to use the term often to get your survival. In fact, we are running away of calling our place orphanage home. We call it children's center. Because now I have some kids who are parents and they are living there. So there is no point. I mix them together. you know. So we call it children's center. So to me, I think our colleagues who are doing the similar project that I'm doing, it, should, it is not the work for the government to come and monitor what you're doing uh, for you to do it right. If it is not your call, please go, go away. Look for your call. God will bless you there. But if it is your call, please do it rightly. Because remember, you can get all the money and you, mis you, misuse, you misuse it in different ways. Let me give you one example. You take the money for the orphans and then you build a story house in one of the town. How much will you get in that? Number two, do you know you can die and your children will still remain orphans as others? Number three, do you know even your children can die when they get married and their children, your grandchildren remain in the same problem where others were? Because the ones that you see are orphans, they will, they will belong to other families. The problem is that they lost their parents. That's why their name became, they are now orphans. So when you're doing something, start put something in your mind that even you, you can die and your children will remain orphans. Even your children, even if they grow, they can die as well and then their grandchildren remain often. So there are some curses that our people bring into their family in the name of greediness. So to me, I decided not to follow that. I have a carpentry workshop. I make, I do welding. I have cows. I do, I do a lot of milk. I make money on those places. And if I want to buy something neat for my family, I'm getting money from that side. But anything to, to, in the name of the orphan, in the name of the organization, belongs to the organization. You can see even now, we receive a lot of donations from America, the medical equipment. If um, maybe other people could sell some in Mombasa and Very pocket true. the money. Because you have so much. A lot is here. But I want this thing to help our people. There is a widow somewhere who is sick, who needs attention, medical attention. And nobody is taking care of this person because there is no money, there is no medical equipment. But if somebody, maybe in America, uh, thought of sending me all this, you know, so it, it will be my stupid mind of thinking of selling any, you know, because this is, this, this, these things maybe they will not help me as Newton. But there's a person now in need of medical attention. Same to school, same to the orphanage, same to the widows. When, when somebody sends you a donation to a widow, this is not yours. This, Thing belongs to the widow. You are just a bridge, you know. So if you use it wisely, then God will plant some seeds, and your bridge will never fail. You'll be a bridge for the rest of the life that you live in this world. Okay, I want to ask something. <coughs> your organization has grown, and uh, I know you, 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 have, you have worked so hard for this. The children's home has a head, somebody responsible who takes care of 
the children's home. The school has a principal who is, who is in charge, and then the health center has also and the senior medical officer there. What's your relationship with the kids? Do you always have time with these kids to have a bond with them? Those are my children. Every Friday in the evening, we have a church service with them. We build our own church where we have pastors and all church leadership. I am with them from 6 to 8 every Friday. Every Wednesday, I go at the center in the evening after schools. I, I talk with them, I talk with them if I'm around because somehow I'm very busy with other things. Every Saturday, I am with them. I, I, I have to go with, uh, to stay with them. My wife stay with them every Saturday. Every Sunday, I'm with them in church. I have very tight relationship with my children. They, they are my children. I feel my heart is with them all the time. You know, and I cannot sleep well if even one is sick. That's why we have the clean and beautiful hospital with all equipments to take care of my own children. <laughs> and mark you, my biological children, my, the, the, my personal children, some are staying with them at the orphanage. They go to the same church with them. They come to the same hospital with them. They go to school with them. They are my children. But you can afford Brook House because you are not, you are not as poor as you used to be and you can afford for them Brook House. To, uh, to re and all these big schools, but you decided to have them stay with these other uh, children who need help at the same place. God has blessed me, I can afford the best school for my children. But why? If I'm giving the cult education, why should I take my children to a different school? And again, uh, I have a school. Can I tell you, my wife delivered in this hospital one year ago. Oh, my hospital? Yes. Because I, f I believe that my, my medical officers are doing a good job. Why should I take care of some people's wives and I cannot take my, 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 my wife, uh, care of my own wife? I'm, uh, my, I, I'm sure that my medical experts are qualified to work in our hospital. I was admitted in this hospital two weeks ago. Oh. Me personally, I don't go to Okakan, I don't go to any other hospital, I come to my own. If I need something which they cannot manage to do, is when I'll be taken there for just test and then they can manage other medical things. So I trust the team that I'm working with, you know. And that's why you can see we, the work relationship between me and uh, my, my workers. It's just like unique. We, it's like a bond. You cannot even say I'm the boss or I'm. Yes, it's I just, very it's, 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 yeah. Very even if I come, even if I walk with, you can even know. You can't know you can't that know. this is the director and this yes. is who, <laughs> because I trust what they are doing. We just correct one another. They correct me, I correct them, and we keep on moving like that. And that is when, even after my death, maybe I can go ahead of them. They can still manage the project well without me. Share about how the establishment of this hospital came about because, of course, uh, you, you always wanted the kids to have a hospital, but there's something unique about the name of this hospital. Yes, Beryl's Medical Center is having a unique, uh, unique uh, understanding. Uh, Beryl's, Beryl is a certain lady. Beryl is not my wife. Beryl is not one of the whites coming from America. Beryl is not my, the name of my mother or my auntie. Beryl is a certain girl who I found sick. She was really sick in one of the hospitals around and she was not admitted because there was nobody to take care of the bills and what have you. So she was brought there by, by a brother who did not have anything. And when I got, I was just going to visit a friend in that hospital. And I, I, the first thing we, we saw was just uh, the certain young girl uh, trembling like she was really sick and then I asked the nurses what's going on with the with this girl and they told me this girl was brought by a brother but we are trying to follow up who will take care of the bills and we need to do some tests and I said okay now I'm the father just take in the the patient and make sure that you treat that patient very well then they had I told them to admit that that girl so they admit this girl uh, unfortunately this girl passed on after 10 days. So I just paid the bill, then I bought the coffin, 
since I knew she was an orphan. And then after that, uh, this thing, uh, during those days, it was just in my, my mind all the time. How many kids are dying the same way? How many people are challenged who cannot manage? I have to do something about this. That thing stuck in my mind. So when I wanted to register a clinic, I was wondering which name will I do? We have the name of the organization, it's called God Will Provide or Uzima Christian. Uh, can I do my wife's name? You know, I consulted. Then the dream, I always, before I go to sleep, the dream of the name is coming to me. Why don't you just call the hospital Berails? So Berails, Berails, Berails. Until now I say, I'm going to register this hospital and the name will be Beryl. So Beryl is a membrane of our young lady who died because of negligence. Nobody was there to take care of this, this girl. So Beryl is here to help such kind of situations. We have many cases. They come, we treat them, they go. We have many children that we don't even ask where they're coming from. We don't ask for money. We just, so long as I can get medicine and I get how I can pay my nurses, my staff, oh, I just make sure that the patients were treated and go back home. It is not easy to build a simple house because the materials keep on rising day, and day by day. But remember, I told you I, my background was not from a rich family. And uh, my first house was the, the we call it the, 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 the grass touch house. So I remember when the rain was coming, when it was raining overnight, I had to take my two kids to sleep in my mom's house because it will be rain. So me and my wife, we remain there. We being rain. I remember we, we put an iron seat on top of the bed. So whether it is raining, maybe it will rain in the, in the entire house, but us, maybe it will not be rain. We, we bought one iron seat, I think. I remember that very well. Then one day I went to visit a certain widow in the evening, when I was still living at my house. And I found her house was really rain in. And she was sleeping in the ground, in the floor. And I did not have money. I remember that thing pushed me to borrow money to buy iron seed and go build a house for this woman. This is before you built yours? Before I built mine. It was so painful because she was a widow and old. Right. And she was sleeping in the ground. And I came and took my mattress. Because I was like, we are still young. We can sleep in the mat. I took my mattress and take to this woman. She is still alive, you know, and took to this woman, you know. And then I, I only asked my mom if it is, is there any, anything against me giving her my, my trust. She said, no problem. Yeah, you know, in Luoland we have a lot. She said, no, you just do what God told you to do. Like, you know, what your heart, the way you feel, you know. Then I took the mattress and blanket to this woman, you know, before I built my house. Then after that, I built my house. God gave me money and start building my house. And then I built my house. And then after that, I asked myself, how many widows? And then again, when I went to visit the orphans, where they came from, like their guardians, I found the life is so difficult. So I keep on like, if I visit one, I just feel maybe I have to do something for this family. That's how I managed to build uh, 1,500 homes. Another one I did during the December, when me and my wife, we, we were walking around and give people some food, like the, the, the poor families. We just do shopping, then we drive around. We found a woman around 70 years old, no, 60, I think. The man was around 80. This woman was blind. And the man was old and sick. Then the blind woman was coming to Yugi's to beg to get something back home. But that day, it was a Christmas day. So she could not manage to go to town. There was nothing to eat. The house was like they were sleeping outside. There was no bed. There was like, it was a real suffering. I have the pictures. If I show the pictures, you will cry. Then I really cried in that house because it was too painful to me. And I did not have money. I was like, God, why do you punish me? You give me all this headache, you know. Then I contacted somebody in America and this guy sent me money. And the following day I built the house and I do some shopping. This is what motivates me a lot to continue serving, doing. And I've never done it only here. I've worked all over the county, in Guasi, here, in Kisumu, in Kakamega, 
whenever you know whenever I, somebody called me there's a need when i have the money i always go and build i went to do the 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 borehole i went to, yes. to to do some borehole so that they can do irrigation i remember the governor i met with the governor and the governor uh, we talked and then i was to do some project in ramu town in mandera county oh, you uh, yeah roba even the former senator even the former mp mm. they were my friends during then because we have never communicated again since i left but they were good people that i worked with so i went there and i found there was some cases of sickness i came with some kids to nairobi to get treated three of them one passed on because he was having cancer but the two of them survived and we did surgery and they went back to Madeira. Okay. Yeah. How of was it sharing us just before we started recording about the kid that especially died. You you talked with him and, and, and you were driving back home and then they passed on. Yeah, this a kid that I found. I met him in Mandera and he was really sick and I came with him to Kenyatta. What kind of cancer did he have? He was having um, a brain tumor. Yeah. So it was like the last stage. So nothing we could have done. This this boy called me in the morning. He used the doctor's phone to call me and say, I want to see you. Then I went to, I drove to uh, Kenyatta Hospital. It's around six, seven hours driving. When I got there, uh, the boy hugged me and told me, Daddy, I'm doing better. And I'm proud to see you again. Thank you for your support. And may God bless you. You from Oyugis? From Oyugis to see the, this boy. So after seeing him, I was having a good conversation with him. I brought him some uh, chips, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some snacks. And when after that, when I left coming back, when I reached Narok, the doctor called me that the boy passed away. So I was like, can I go back to Nairobi again or what can I do? Then I said, let me just reach home. Then tomorrow I'm going back because he was a Muslim. So uh, you know, Muslim, they do bury, yeah. So I said, I have to go back and pay the bill. So I went back and paid the bill and uh, made sure the boy was uh, taken to, to rest. You know, I cannot uh, say that I've never felt it or I felt it. My calling is different. You cannot help all. Some will run away, some will remain with you and some will stay with you. If five, six, seven, eight run away and I'm trying looking them and I cannot find them, God will replace them with the new people who want it. I just want to appreciate uh, the partnership that I've been receiving from the United States. Uh, I, I work with many close friends and they are really supporting me because if it was not them uh, from, with their heart, that, their good heart that they have, we could not manage to reach where we have reached today. But I thank them because God has spoken with them to support this, our ministry in Kenya. And I just want to tell them that what they've been doing, the support that they've been giving to us has been reaching to the people. And good enough, they've been coming and they've witnessed it. So I'm just urging them not to stop doing it because it's not the will of their heart, but it's the will of God. It's a, they, it's, they don't just do it because they want to do it, but I'm very sure that God has a purpose for them to be there for me and to be, and to be there for our people in this country and i want to say this to my brother johnny he's a good friend of mine he's a brother his heart is the heart that i've never seen anybody with the heart that johnny has even when things are difficult with us if i call johnny and say johnny it is this way he always help he has never told me newton i cannot help you what he can say is that i don't have it today but i'm praying whenever i get the chances i will actually send you whatever you guys need to make you move. So I wish I could get more people to help in this uh, organization because we are doing a lot of work in the, in the society. And we are, our win is not to win the name, but our win is that Jesus wins. Our win is that God wins the war that uh, the devil is planting in this uh, world. Our win is that to praise the name of God. It's not like uh, Newton did this, Johnny did this, but we are winning that Jesus is winning. So I'm just urging them to continue uh, supporting us. Like now we are really down uh, with many things. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm praying so hard so that we can get other people to help the, uh, the, the organization. We are, in, we are in need of many things. Like if you go to school, we, I still have to finish building the boys' dormitory. If you go there, I need to build the admin block. 
I've not built a lot of things, the, the playing ground for the kids. Mm. If you come to the hospital here, we're still renting this facility. And I'm praying to start building our own, our own facility, you know, because somehow it's difficult to pay the rent. If you go back to the no main project, we still need those who can support on feeding program. We still have to support widows, build them houses. So it's a continuous process. So I'm still urging and asking anybody, not only the people who have been standing with me, anybody who is anywhere in this in the world, if you listen to our uh, talk today or in the future, please try to reach us and then we will find a way of reaching other people who are in need. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Newton, when you are not at the orphanage, at school or here at the resource store, what do you do? How do you spend your free personal time? When I'm not on duty, like I'm in the hospital, school, orphanage, I am a person who is living a different life. I do a lot of farming, I have cows, I feed cows at home, I milk them, I sell milk, I have a carpentry workshop, welding and other stuff that I'm doing outside work. So after duty, I am a husband to a woman, I am a parent to other children. I live normal life that people live in the community and I do my work. Yeah. Okay, uh, by the way, something we, we talk about is that you were, you had a rehabilitation center in Nairobi. Yes. And you moved it to Moyogis. How, how has it been? How many people have you helped? Are there people still there? Yes, we help a number of people who were in the, that line of addiction. And we had a place in Nairobi that we hold, we hold them, we teach them, we pray with them. And we remove it because the distance was so it was so long, like if I want to go to Nairobi, it's a long distance. So we move it back to the village because the same, same people that we were helping, most of them were coming from the village. So we brought it back here to continue doing the program and again to train them. Because we have the welding workshop, we have the carpentry workshop, and we have the tailoring workshop. So we, 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 we brought the project down here to help those who are in the rehab center. And even now we have a, a graduate, we have one of our graduates living with me, and is now willing to start going through with the new people who will be joining from next year, January. So it's a, it's a, it's a good project, it's helping a lot. Like it's changing somebody who's lost to a living person who is serving God and doing the normal duties that they should be doing as a human being. I come from game in Rangue sub county. I mean from one at God will provide high school. When God will provide started I never knew about it. But one of the staff from the God will provide was sent to look out for the kids who really needed help. And when she came to our village, I was the first person she found and from my village I was the only person who joined God will provide. When I joined God will provide I was eight years old. When was this? That was the year 2015. Okay. Do you have parents? Yeah, my dad, he died in the year 2007 while I was born. And my mom, she is alive up to now, though she's not financially stable. Okay. How many siblings do you have? I have a total of 10 siblings, uh, five from another mom and five from my own mom. Okay. Does your mom visit you occasionally? Yeah, sometimes she comes into this place when the guardians are called. Okay. Uh, how has it been being at God will provide? God will, being in God will provide has been a joyful moment and sometimes sad moments because other children, the pain of losing their parents is was still in them by the time they joined. But when we started feeling like God will provide was a home, life has become so joyful because we've been given every single need that we might want. Okay. 
what's your message to your fellow students here who are also being supported? To my fellow students who are being supported, what I can tell them is that they work hard in school, they stick in prayers because uh, Nelson Mandela once said that education is the only weapon that you can use to change the world. So what I can tell them is let them be focused ahead and work even smart. But I would like to thank him for accommodating us and letting us call him dad. And what I promise him that whatever he has done for us won't be gone for free, but we'll do something great to make him proud. Okay. What do you want to become? I want to become a lawyer. Why? Because uh, the way before I joined God will provide, some types of injustice were subjected into my family and other fellow villagers by those who felt more superior than us. Then I decided that if there is something that can be done to stop them, I would do it. And that's why I've decided to become a land stand for the rights of such people. Okay. Who do you look up to uh, in the legal fraternity, especially in Kenya? Okay. In one of my teachers, he had already left God will provide. He used to call me CJ. And my fellow students also used to call me CJ, and some also called me future president. Then when I got to know about Masiko, uh, Matako Omemi, I really felt like one day I want, I'd want to be like her. Okay. Yes. If you ever meet Matako Omemi, what would you want to tell her? I'd want to tell her that she secured a post for me in the Supreme Court. <laughs> when you are done with school, of course. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much and success Welcome. in everything you're doing. Thank you. Okay, to me it has been so much blessing to me because even now when I just see the picture of how I was when I came here, I was so little, I was so young. But as per now I can hear people telling me, oh Calvin, you've grown so big, you've grown so... I give thanks to God for bringing me here and I give thanks to everyone who has been working hard for me to reach at this level. Okay, to my dad I can say he has worked so hard. He has worked so hard to nurture me and not only me, my brothers, I call them my brothers because living with them for so long is like creating a relationship with them. So I give thanks to my dad so much for providing everything, for making sure that I reach up to this far. I pray that God may bless him abundantly. I know God is blessing him. I've always wanted to be an engineer. That's what my ambition is. I'm Belinda Kotondego, one of the students at God Will Provide Mission School. I joined God Will Provide in class 7, whereby I got a sponsorship from our ABLE principal. And after I sat for my KCP 2021, God Will Provide, and I was lucky to join God Will Provide High School. And I'm so glad to, re to learn here. Our ABLE director has provided nice teacher for us and we feel okay even though it's not a national school. We feel comfortable to learn here and we know we will make it and all will be possible when we are still under his care. It has been um, um, a very exciting role because um, as a mother I'm learning so many things to understand the, the needs of every child. It's my glory to see that every child, uh, their needs are met, to understand them and to give them the, the needs that they want. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's your message to all these kids that to you, they are like your children? Uh, my message to these kids is that um, I'm praying for them to grow up as responsible persons in future because uh, the community needs them in future. They w we want them to live a better life because um, where they came from, it wasn't good, but we know that the future is assured. So we want them to be um, very responsible in future. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm the principal of God Will Provide Mission School. The orphanage is our mother. Uh, let me say is our mother institution. The school started from the orphanage. It is at the orphanage where we started all everything that is now constituting, constituting to what is making the school as God will provide missions. We have uh, roughly 90 students that are uh, 
hostage at, at the orphanage. But remember, there are, we have other borders from the community level. Yes. Enrolled in school or orphanage? At the school, we have 270. When did the school start? The school started back in the year 2019. We started from, by then we had only the orphans that started school from preschool to class six. Okay. Yes. Uh, how many cases have you attempted? We've only done one. Initially, we were to, we, by now we had, uh, we were to have done two, but uh, our first KCP, we enrolled uh, learners out of the school. That is adult primary school. My name is Lucy Mongo Kelo. I'm a clinical professor with profession, the facility in charge. I'm the overall. There is the, there is the director who is above me. Wow, well, it has been quite a good way of working with because in under God will provide, you are working with different people because one, the organization itself is dealing with the orphans, you have the pupils and students at school, and also you are working with the community, you are also working with the widows. So it has been a quite a wholesome way of working with each and every person. We relate, we work like one, when they get sick, this is the first point of where they get their treatment. Yeah, if they, it's not a case which maybe needs to be referred to any other facility or any other level of care. So most of the time you'll get the, there are some children at the orphanage, they have some chronic illnesses, they'll need, uh, they'll need to be attended to frequently. So it's a good thing that we are here, we are able to offer that kind of service. So sometimes we also even go to them. We are around 10, yes, we are around 10 days per now, but we are still planning on adding more employees as the facility grows, yes. Okay, we are about, uh, as per now, we are about three clinicians, uh, two nurses. We have the other supportive, the support staff. Yeah, and we have a lab technician. We have a doctor who works at our dental unit. We have uh, also someone who works with the ultrasound. So that's how we work. Mbangu ilikuwa mbaya ilikuwa nyumba ya nyasi. Mse alikufa kaniwacha kwa nyumba ya nyasi. Na hiyo nyumba ilikuwa mbaya. Sasa mimi nilisikia huyu kijana wangu kwa redio. Sasa mimi nikalia nitasema ai mimi naangaika. Sina mtoto. <coughs> Sina kitu chochote, wacha tu. Sasa mimi bila nilimsikia nikakimbilia yeye nikaenda kwake. Nikampata. Akakuja akaona nyumba, akapiga picha na mimi pia pamoja. Aliniambia alikuja siku ya Jumapili ninajua hiyo. Akaniambia mama, ai, umebaki kwa nyumba mbaya na mna gani? Nikambia ya mtoto angu, mi sina mtoto, sina kitu chochote. Bas, akaniambia mama, umesaa kijana, kutangia leo umesaa kijana. Usilie mama, ya nilikuwa nalia machosi. Akaniambia suku ya arubainizu, suku ya ramisi, nita kujengea nyumba. Na kweli, suku ya ramisi ya leta kila kitu waka nijengea nyumba. Hata chakula hili walikula kwa hii nyumba. Yendi alitoa. Kila kitu, tena alipata kama mi mgonjwa. Na hiyo, baridi ya hiyo nyumba niletea ugonjwa sayote sayote. Na tangu wapo, sijaanza kugonjeka, niko mzima ni kukua nyumba. Amenilinda, hui kijana angu, amenilinda. Siwezi sema kitu kwa haki. Ati ikuwe chakula ananiletea anga, kikuja ananiletea. Na auko na watoto? Sina mtoto. Auko kupata mtoto? Si kupata mtoto na mse. Mse tulikuwa wanawake wawili. Na mkubwa ndi alisa. Oh, yuko? Hako, mkubwa. Na watoto wake? Na watoto wake wako. Huyu ni bibi ya kijana haki mkubwa. Oh, mm. huyu ni nyarodi mkubwa. Ni huyu nyarodi mkubwa. Oh. Mm. Na sasa hako, wawa wangeweza, hakuna mtoto huka ngeweza kusaidia? Hakuna. Oh. Iboma yetu yapa, oh. iboma hile hakuna kitu. Oh. Hata huyu kijana anafanya tu kasi ingi ya ochime. How did you find yourself into Ariyabu? <laughs> Oh yes, the thing is, <clears throat> um, for the past like before I came, uh, for the past two years before I, I went to the center, I had I had noticed I had a problem. 
I wasn't sure what it was. I was like, it's depression. It's I was confused on the whole thing. And uh, slowly talking to other people, I I came to think uh, the best way to to get any help, even if I I was in depression, the best way to get any help is to take a break from from day to day life altogether. So I was opting for for a rehab. Because rehabs are, are known for, for for mental health, and it's not as easy when you're out in the world to to get access to to such things. So I was looking into getting a rehab. So that is how I slowly uh, I push and pull. At times I refuse. I get the opportunity. I refuse. At times I'm too busy. And it's not a good busy, just uh, busy, keeping yourself busy in things so that you don't go in yeah. the right direction. They have shown me where the solution of the prob- of all problems is. They just pointed me to the to the solution, and I am not afraid to say the solution is Christ, and and that is what we point people to. Uh, it's it's also a discipleship program. That's how I came to to remain behind and and disciple others into it also so that is basically what what happens at the center you you just you are shown christ and you move to to the direction of christ and you keep moving towards him and keep moving towards him discovering new things discovering new uh, new things that you need to change and you continue changing and changing and changing because it's really not about just drugs Omajina. Naitwa Kevin Onyango. Mimi ni welder. Okay. Hapa kwa bill provide. Okay. Mimi ndio nafanya maintenance ya upande wa vitu za chuma zote. Yeah. Yeah. Vitu ukisema vitu vitu vya chuma ni kumaanisha nini? Okay, kuna viti za shule hizo lockers. Kuna kuna windows hizo madirisha za domes on our beds we have so many things for your facility so mimi na shughulikia hiyo ili tuone watoto wetu at the end of the day wako sawa na ulijipata baadhi okay mimi kuja kwangu hapa it was the plan ya god yeah because i was in nairobi then nikatoka kwa nairobi life ikiwa hard I drop home, home in Busia. So, kidogo kidogo huko there is a friend of mine tulikuwa tunafanya naye na hiyo. I was addicted by drinking. So, akaniambia, "Kuja pande hii niko na rehab." Nika, ah, nika sema sasa mimi ndakujaje? Na mimi mambo ya ya rehab mimi sitaki. Niko sawa. Basi kuja basi kikazi. So, akanidanganya nikuje kikazi. Dickens Ngicho Nation Africa